Testing 70... F- yeah, y'all go ahead and say some shit. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so... The Video Game Awards are coming up this year, so I thought it appropriate that, like, we kind of go over the nominees and kind of decide, you know, what we think should win and what we think is garbage and how rigged we think this shit is. <laughs> and other valid points of that. So, uh... I figure the easiest way to kind of go do this is to go over, like, each award category and then, you know, kind of go over the nominees and, yeah, talk about it. Word. Right? Um, so there are actually a lot of weird categories this year because the Video Game Awards in itself is, I don't want to say fairly new, but it's, like, unrefined. So every other year they kind of change some of the categories. And then with this year specifically, YouTube being, like, why is my chair sinking? Oh, because it... Uh, I think it's yeah. <laughs> I, I I just got tired. I didn't want to explain. It. <laughs> but, um, but no no no. So with YouTube kind of being as big as it is this year, and esports also being as big as it is, there's actually a lot of esports and YouTube related uh, categories. So there's gonna be a lot of those. And honestly, in a lot of these categories, there's a lot of people I never fucking heard of. So I don't know. If hopefully, at least one of us is familiar with each category. Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> um, if not, I guess we'll just skip it. But um, I guess we'll start off, right? You guys ready? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so the first category they have listed here is uh, content creator of the year. And I guess in simple, it's like who you think the best content creator was, be it YouTube, right. Twitch, whatever. And I, I don't know none of these fucking people. But um, <laughs> the, 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 the first one is Dr. Lupo. Nah. Second one nah. is Myth. Nah. Third one is Ninja. Of course. Uh, fourth is Pokemon. 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 Yeah, it's a girl. Yeah. And then the last one is Willie Rex. I don't know. I don't know none of these motherfuckers, uh, so I have no <clears> vote. So you gotta. But you seem the, like you're a little familiar the, with them. The only two that I've heard of is fucking Ninja and Pokemon. And they both Twitch streamers, and they both like the salt of media creation. <laughs> this nigga Ninja plays Fortnite religiously and gets like over 20,000 motherfuckers in his streams. There was one time I was on Twitch, this nigga had 100,000 motherfuckers in the stream. But it seems like he's caught like, on to the Fortnite hype. What the fuck? Yeah, pretty much. So like, then... This nigga's pretty much the Fortnite god. Like, some okay. shit like that. And I didn't even know who this nigga was until I was watching other niggas talk about his shit. So then, what do you <clears> think <throat> about this Pokemon main? I never, I never actually watched her shit, but she seems like... I've seen other videos talking about her. Like, some scandal or some shit about fucking sexual harassment or some shit. So basically both of these characters Seem like they got off on hype That they're not actual Respected content creators They just got away on some hype Kids love them motherfuckers (laughs) (laughs) Yeah I'm reading about Pokimane right right. now So overall we will skip that category I'm pretty sure she does cosplay shit Um, She has to I'm looking I'm I'm on Google Yeah she got pictures up She Ooh she look rough there boy So uh (laughs) The, the next category... I said it all. Adrian, you might be a little <laughs> bit more familiar with this one. Oof. It's uh, Best Esports Moment. So the moments are C9 Comeback Win in Triple OT versus Phase. Mm. The next one is G2 Beating RNG. Third one is KT versus IG Base Race. Fourth one is OG's Massive Upset of LGD. Uh, you're gonna you're gonna automatically say fuck this last one. The last one is Sonic Fox side switch against yep. J1 and <laughs> hey, Yeah. <laughs> We talked about this in the video. Yep, we talked about yeah, that. Yeah, that one uh, uh, that mm-hmm. one doesn't need like so, that, 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 it was controversial, but I don't think it's it was like, like the a best moment. Moment. Probably like, the first that triple overtime. The first one, the triple OT. The triple OT was I, I, like... I mean, I, I've only seen, like, two or three of these moments, but I would say the triple OT is pretty like, awesome. you went in the triple, triple overtime. Triple overtime is intense. Come on, like, man. Like, that's, that's rare. That's, yeah, that's always intense. I, I guess, let's say... Wait, what, what, what game were they playing, though? Uh, I think C9, right? You said C9. C9? Right? Or is that the name of the team? I don't know. It's very inspecific. It doesn't say the C9 game? C9 is the team. Okay. Yeah, it just C9, says C9 comeback. Uh, they don't say what game they were playing? No. 
Hold on. You just think everybody hip to esports, like. Everybody yeah, I guess they just game. assume. On the actual video where it, uh, like the guy is explaining the nominees, it mm-hmm. shows it. But on the website, yeah. So. Either way, uh, if it was any shooter aside from Siege, I have no respect for that shit. Ooh. If it was if it was Overwatch or fucking. No, I remember. I remember seeing this, and a lot of it was like League of Legends, Dota. It's uh, oh. it's it's league. It's league. Yeah, it wasn't a lot of Overwatch. It's league. Yeah, I ain't got respect for that shit either. <laughs> I do only because I've played League, and I know how crucial that is in that game because one game by itself is, is good it takes at least 30 minutes yeah like yeah. one I game by itself. and that's like a one-sided match where it's like one team kind of bulldozes the other Ooh, yeah that's a 30 minute because there's definitely there's phases there's lanes people got to play their classes correctly blah 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 blah. if your teammate sucks or you got one person on the other team that got fed early on and is carrying the team not because of skill because they got fed but the, there's like also who got barren first at what time <laughs> when did we go to the forest who got the buff who got the red buff who got the blue buff. it's it's insane it's intricate it's what, very intricate. what items are you running what's the meta like it so league of legends and triple overtime for me is like all right that that's like a three-hour game or some shit that's just like you may as well gone to work like <laughs> that's a long game but i don't know i would say just the fact that it's triple overtime for me is more than enough i'm like oh it's triple overtime that's okay so i guess we'll, we'll go for them this next category before i name the nominees I'm actually going to ask y'all, do y'all even think it's worth talking about? <laughs> it's best esports host. Like, I don't, I, don't really think, I don't really think the host deserves an award. No. Like, esports host? No. Yeah, like, I don't really think, like, that doesn't really deserve an award to me. Like, okay. Just need best commentator. Give that shit to Yipes. Yipes. <laughs> IFC Yipes. Uh, yeah. Yipes. No, he's not even a nominee. Give Why? that shit to D1. Because he's not a host. He's a, yeah, he's a, he's a commentator. Oh, he's a commentator, yeah. yeah. But yeah, it's like you're a host. Like, all you did is, like, introduce the game. Well, maybe say some quick quips and then I don't, that was it. I, I also don't think that hosts are ready right now because, like, esports hasn't been around long enough or in the mainstream long enough because most of the time when you watch these hosts talk you can tell it's like awkward yeah like, exactly so like awkward. i really don't think that that yeah deserves. like if they got a teleprompter they're just barely reading that shit yep. you know it's All like right. it's i don't think hosts so we'll be, skip that it's too one. early for that this one i will talk about it but i personally don't think it's a good category just because the category itself is best esports event i personally don't think that that's something you could categorize because each event is different yeah. So it's like, how can you compare, like, like for example, the categories are uh, E-League Major, Boston 2018, EVO 2018, League of Legends World Championship, Overwatch League Grand Finals, and the International 2018. Well, I don't get what you're judging it Well, that sounds like... Right? Like, like, what is the judgment? That like, sounds like which event had the most hype. That That's could, what yeah, it sounds like. like yeah. How so do you compare... Like, which, which event had the best... Moments, which events had the best players, which yeah. is like was, was well, the most well run. I'll tell you, Evo's not shouldn't even be on that list. If that's the case, it's <laughs> yeah. overshadowed by everything else. And no. I, I love Evo. My thing though is it doesn't make sense because it's like, how do you have like Evo versus League of Legends? Like, not uh, in the sense of like one game's better than the other, no, but the Evo numbers. isn't one game. The, yeah. the Evo is a, a slew of games. Well, also the versus... numbers of the league, like league blows yeah. blows Evo. I think right. Like there is more league people watching league than there are people watching Evo. I think so. Yeah. I think. I I'm think not, so. So I'm like to me, to me, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Now, I mean, these the pictures of these stadiums. The Overwatch one actually looks the smallest. Um, the 2018 International looks the biggest. That shit looks like like four football fields or some shit. Jesus. And then all the other ones, all the other ones look like one good stadium, like a basketball stadium maybe. Yeah. But the Overwatch one literally looks the smallest. But I mean, that's just judging by the little picture. That Listen to this. Yeah. The season three World Championship Grand Final broadcast on October fourth was watched by thirty two million people with a peak of concurrent viewership of eight point five million. What the fuck does Evo have? Like a couple hundred thousand if that? <laughs> like yeah, Evo's so not like, even on I that. I don't completely understand how this is a category, but whatever. Um, Finding game community is really small. It's a lot smaller than people think. This one was a category that I do think does exist, but all right, not do think it does exist. Obviously, it does. I'm about to read it off. <laughs> but it's like, I saw it and was like, oh, yeah, that, that is a thing. It's best esports coach. 
I kind of think it, it should be a category, but then at the same time, it was like, really? That's a category? The coach is like <laughs> each of the teammates. That's a waste of... It's not like, okay. Oh, yeah, the coaches... Well, some of these coaches actually are like like the coach, and then a couple of them are like the team leader, basically. Yes, I <laughs> guess. That's more for like league. That's more for... No, yeah, all like, of them are like league, league, Overwatch teams, League of Legends team, Dota team. Yeah, we're not that We're but, not that invested in, those cat- in that category just for yeah. those games. We're not too familiar. I'm the only one that, in here that's played League but like that. I do so. say that that one does deserve a category. Yeah. I just, it's just, it doesn't apply to me. I think it also, like a lot of the, I think esports in general needs more time for a lot of these categories to be relevant. Well, my thing well, is, think, like, they're trying time. to make it more relevant because they're trying to pass esports off as an actual sport. Yeah, exactly. So giving these niggas awards and shit is Yeah, like is, is the way to do it. Yeah, it's validation. Yeah, it's fucking and then the next one is best esports team. It, that's kind of another one I don't completely understand how they how rate it. Because each team that they have is for a different game. (laughs) Yeah, so it's like, it'd be like if you just said, like, best sports team, and you had, like, the Lakers, the Packers, and the Ducks. Yeah. It was like, wait, what? So, (laughs) what? Are we going off of, like, win record? I don't know, but I'll say the, uh, the, uh, the, the... Oh, wait, no, they also have the the games that they play. Okay. Okay, but I'll say the, the... the, the, the nominees. I can't pronounce this first one. Uh, Astralis, CSGO. Oh, Counter Strike. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Uh, really. Then there's Cloud Nine for League of Legends. Yeah, Cloud Nine. Fnatic pretty, League of Legends. They're pretty persistent. London Spitfire for <laughs> OWL. I don't know. Overwatch oh, yeah. League. Overwatch oh, what, League. Yeah. Okay. And then OG for Dota 2. Honestly, I'd give that to either for the, the Fnatic or the other league team. Yeah, because... Fnatic's, hey, Fnatic's pretty, like... They're pretty consistent as a I team. I mean, these niggas look ruthless in their thumbnail. They're, they're pretty consistent. Like, every time I've seen them, they're pretty consistent. As a, as a coherent... Like, a cohesive team, just as a team, they operate... Well, so maybe that's what they're kind of is at as. Like, how well the team actually yeah, works they, as like, a working team. It's like when they play, it's like they work as a unit, like okay. not more more so than I feel like the other nominees do. It still doesn't okay. make sense to me. <laughs> all right, all right. I'm trying to give it something to anchor on to. <laughs> don't worry, we're we're getting, getting, don't get don't worry. We're get out. Of, we're getting out of these esports nominees. We'll get to the actual games in a moment. All right, this one is going to upset Adrian just a little bit. It's best esports player. <laughs> Nominee one. Yeah. Sonic Fox. Nah, of course. Nah. Uh, nominee course. two is Toki- Tokido. 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 Nah. Uh, nominee three is Uzi. Uh, four is Simple. I, I think that's that he has a one where the I should be, but yeah. I think it's like Simple. And then I don't know how do you pronounce that one. Just say Jojo Knock. Jojo Knock? Yeah. The fuck? Or JJ Jojo Knock. Jojo Knock. Does it say what games? Um, it has... Well, it don't no, it doesn't. It doesn't have Because you got to give that shit to Sonic Fox, bro. Yeah. You want to hate that nigga all you want. He's literally like Floyd Mayweather. Like, this nigga... Yeah, I've, yeah, I've, I've seen He's he been like, taking over, yeah. yeah. He's, He's been taking over, like, like multiple so games. Fucking much. No joke. Yeah. Even though you can you can hate that nigga all you want, he still like, fucking wins. No joke. He, he'll, a game will come out, he'll never touch it. Pick it up and be playing. No, yeah, I've seen it. I've seen it. Soul Calibur Six. He was beating veteran Soul Cal players. Like, to get, like, like play that every that soul one caliber. fucking tournament. Like, I was like, wow, bro. But he got right. destroyed by this one nigga. Yeah. But it's like, you know, I don't even like, I still think that nigga, like, goes for the, the top tier characters. Like, so that, that aspect of him, I don't respect. But other than that, nigga, winning all the shit. Because in my, right. so in my head, I'm going for, something. like, man, I would have liked that category more as if it were, if, obviously everyone has their specialty, but, like, uh, the person who played very well at more than just their genre. Like, yeah. so he picked up something else and was like, oh, he's doing pretty decent. All right, cool. He's, like, all-rounded, well-rounded. But, like... Are you talking about specifically fighting games? Or well, no, just outside of it. Because these categories, each oh, yeah, of these that, players... That category, if you, like... If you gave it fighters, oh, shooters, yeah. And he plays fighters and fucking... Yeah. Jump over to fucking League or some shit. I would be, like, would impressed. Be, yeah, I would, would be very be impressed. It's, like, not super possible, it's, but it's, like... anybody doing that shit? That's what but I these know. each of these players are in, like, one category. Tokido mainly plays Street Fighter. The, the dude's a monster, but he mainly plays fighters. I, don't, I haven't seen him play anything else. 
Okay. Same with these other guys. They probably play one to two things. So, yeah, you got to give it to Sonic Fox, but I think the category is kind of like... It's not ready yet. Kind of as far as shooters, do you yeah. know anybody who I mean, jumps from different shooters? Like, like I said... Uh, CSGO to Siege or some yeah, shit. Yeah, right. Uh, I mean, as I was kind of saying at the beginning, again, like the Video Game Awards as a whole is a fairly new award show. So... Every other year, they change the categories or what the category specifically is. And esports, honestly, being like a newly recognized thing, these esports categories are all over the place. You know what I mean? Like they're like maybe in two more years, three more years, they'll actually be like more refined. Refined. But as of right now, yeah, I kind of think they're they're not really well put. Like I do think maybe there should be more categories and it should be like best esports player subcategory fighter yeah. best esports yeah. player subcategory it. shooter yeah. Yeah. you know what I mean I personally think that maybe they just didn't have enough time or enough money resources to do that many categories but yeah um, so now we're actually going to get into the actual games so maybe these discussions will be a little bit longer but the first official game category is best esports game the nominees are CSGO Dota 2, fucking Fortnite, <laughs> League of Legends, and Overwatch. I'm going, so, I'm going with League. I have no respect for it. If idiot. we say pure hype, obviously Fortnite. If we yeah, say 100% yeah. pure hype, pure player base, obviously Fortnite. It's taking the world by storm. I get it. But, I mean, there's so many other scales that we could use. Right? For we this category. We don't know what Where they're... Fortnite doesn't even compare. <laughs> so, wait, like, wait, Latin. I want you to tell the world why you have no respect. Yeah, for exactly. Any of these why things. you don't respect? Like, like, I need to know. They're gonna be like, why is he such a hater? <laughs> <laughs> you know, someone's gonna say this yeah, shit. Bro, I'm just like, I'm really picky when it comes to shit, and the whole Fortnite shit, bro. Oh. Uh, <laughs> no, well, the number one Halloween costume for kids was this year. Was fucking soldier. <laughs> no, it was some Fortnite character. That's what I'm saying. The soldier class from Fortnite. Oh, I don't know. Yeah. I thought you were the talking fucking, about fucking Overwatch. Basically, no. Basically that guy. Basically him. Right. Basically. So, that was like the number one. No, I was like, Fortnite. I was like, how does that work? Because you create your own character and shit. But then I, uh, they yeah. have like base characters. Yeah, yeah. They do have like base, base. So I'm yeah. like, all right, that makes sense. It's just kids, man, and the whole cartoony aspect. I can't get behind. They ain't even got no blood in that shit, bro. So what no, about... Look, look, the, the game actually, level. a couple months ago, the game went under scrutiny because on the patch, I think it was patch three, they accidentally added titty physics. <laughs> <laughs> they oh, accidentally right. how do you accidentally oh, <laughs> add breast physics I was at an accident but anyway so the game was like under some scrutiny cause they accidentally what up is it isn't it teen though yeah it's rated well that was the issue it's rated like T for teen and I guess the jiggle physics and breast Wouldn't was a little too adult yeah that's so, crazy bro but it was like really how do you accidentally add titty physics that's not something that just happens okay. somebody had to actually animate that and rig it and make it act like that's some bullshit but anyway okay wait yeah like somebody had to make that like, shit so happen. That, that's that's Fortnite Fortnite's easy to hate cause a bunch of stupid ass kids play it and they ruin the internet alright that's out the way but what about <laughs> shit like League, Dota, I mean, what what about it specifically? Specifically, that like, you don't MOBAs like. MOBAs for me, I just don't like that shit. Okay. Mo I tried to get in a league, like, a while back, and I was like, what the fuck is this garbage, bro? <laughs> <laughs> These niggas was like, they was trying to get me into this shit because they had the league club at the school, and I was like, I'll check this shit out, bro. So I go in there, and that nigga X is, like, training me or whatever. It's just like, them niggas were way too serious about that okay. shit, man. He was like, the first thing he told me was, it's okay to run. I'm like, nigga, I don't even know how to play <laughs> Okay, so yet. my thing is, no offense to him, and I, I'm gonna feel bad if he hears this, but he's the wrong person to have trained you. He was garbage. I'm sorry. Like, yeah, dog, like he was I mean, like, he the wrong person to have trained. <laughs> yeah, he's like, high. This is coming from a dude that barely played League, but even I could hold my own. He was garbage. I'm sorry. <laughs> hey, you heard it here from Like, I'm sorry. Hey, man. If you hear this, I'm sorry. Hey, I love hey, you. Hey. I'll always have mad respect for you. But you was trash at League. He said, hey, look, you trash. Stick to cooking, man. That, that, <laughs> I'm that's, sorry. That's not my word. No, I love you, though. That's his hey, word. You know you're my boy, but don't play League no more. God damn. Hey, if I were you, I'd come back at him. And you know, I'd <laughs> <laughs> you know that nigga gonna clap back. <laughs> he gonna come 
Facebook. Like, so, <laughs> yo, I'm gonna get it on my Facebook in a couple days. <laughs> and like, hey, what the fuck you say? <laughs> like, <laughs> all right, so you yeah. challenge me to a one on one, one lane. Who wins? <laughs> <laughs> We about to go at it. Okay, so that's hilarious. So Fortnite, that's easy to be like, it's oh, garbage. Yeah. We don't like it, especially our generation. It's like, man, I mean, little Billy Bob. And look, plus, people I work with that are just stupid. They're like, hey, you gonna get that Fortnite tonight? Like, it's here, serious. Like, you're not about to go. Like, what? What's so good about it? Fortnite itself is not a bad game. That's my thing. Like, the actual game Fortnite is not a bad game. Mm-hmm. The reason I don't like it is because fuck Epic. That's why I don't like Fortnite. Yeah, yeah. Fuck Epic, because yeah. I have no respect for them for how they went about making Fortnite the juggernaut that it is. Because me and Adrian, we started Fortnite before it was Battle Royale. We started yeah. Fortnite when it was just Save the World mode. And don't get me wrong, adding new modes to your game is fine. Jumping onto the modern hype is fine. I get it, but you had a good game from Jump. They, they launched regular save the world mode a couple months before or a month or two before battle royale mode came out they had like four million players decent fan base already making decent money and when i say decent i do mean a lot of money you know what i mean because the only way you could play fortnite save the world mode early was to buy the game it wasn't free to play back then nope right and they had four million players assuming all four million bought the base edition that's four million times 30 and then subtract maybe what thirty percent of that for like the the fees they had to pay for mm-hmm. like marketing and all that shit. Like they make good money already. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. But mm-hmm. then fucking PUBG came out or was out, actually already out and kind of like took the market. So then Epic was like, oh, okay, well fuck for uh, save the world move. Let's hop on this battle royale bandwagon. You know what I mean? And it was just like fuck you guys. Like you had a solid product and you just left it in the dirt. Yeah. Save the world mode does not nearly get as consistent or as good of patches as Battle Royale mode. And that upsets me. I bought the fucking, like, $90 edition of that game. Yes, you did. And y'all funded the Battle Royale. Yeah, exactly! I fucking funded the Battle Royale, and that literally kills me. Like, that fucking kills me. That's so fine. that's why I don't play Fortnite, because it's I have no respect for Epic. I have no respect for the company. I won't lie, though. They made a great game. I've jumped into Fortnite Battle Royale mode or one of the other modes that they've come out with since, and it actually is fun. I cannot take that away from them, but I have no respect for them, so I will not play their game or give them any more of my money. Fuck them. Y'all garbage. (laughs) Yeah. No, these other categories, though, I'll say, like, I mean, I was a League player somewhat back in the day. League was fun. I just hate controller and keyboard and mouse, so I couldn't do it. Dota 2 is the OG. You point and click? Huh? You mean the point and click? Yeah, I can't just do keyboard and mouse, period. I oh, hate keyboard and mouse. I'm and just then, competitive. Point and click is even more painful. Yeah, like, that's, that's, that hurts even more. Be clicking that shit so goddamn yeah. like, I, hard. I have no problem with it. I think, but for me, it's because I because I got my ass beat the first few times, and I was like, I'll never lose to y'all motherfuckers again. Yeah. So I just kept playing it. So it became like a, a pretty then, much an addiction. I just didn't want to lose. Then and I started liking it. Every time I jumped in that shit, they was like, bro, we're not going to push you against players. We're going to play against bots. Because we know you're gonna be trash. It's your first time playing the game, Dang. so we play as we play against bots. And I'm like, all right, but this is all y'all be doing. Like, <laughs> <laughs> that's well, another thing just, too. I, I, you were playing I, with I, like, like if I had team. to play a, a MOBA like that, it would be Smite. Yeah, no, that Smite was the shit. Smite was good. Smite was yeah. good, but it. Smite was alright. I, right. I don't even fuck with Smite though. Like, <laughs> and then like Overwatch. <laughs> Overwatch, Overwatch is if fun. If it wins this category, I wouldn't mind. I wouldn't Overwatch be mad is a Overwatch. fun game. That game is I, fun. I do have a decent amount of respect for Blizzard. I mean, they fuck up here and there. Um, a so. lot of these games, you got to have a good team that makes the game fun, though. Yeah, they're not by-yourself games. That's what people are forgetting. Oh, I, if, if I play about... No, they're meant to be in a team. Well, yeah, I mean, they're esports. Oh, yeah, right? like... They are the games that are considered to be equal to basketball and football and soccer just on a computer screen. You know what I mean? Like the best motherfucking thing about Overwatch. Yeah. That motherfucking Lucio ball, bro. <laughs> bring that shit back and keep that shit in there. They keep bringing it back and taking it out. Just leave it in there. Like, I'll be playing that shit, bro. He Lucio loves Lucio Ball. Ball. Shit. The actual game is trash. <laughs> <laughs> this nigga said the actual game is trash. Like, it, it's not It's not trash, but they try to make it like it's... Like, people who play it will say you have to play the objective. But 
you don't really play the fucking objective of that shit. You go for the fucking kills. That's, That's why the, true. the play of the game is always like a triple a, kill. A dope ass kill. kill some shit it's like usually that. the character that can AOE everybody at once. Yeah, uh, like more than half the time. Nerf right? this! Bing, 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 bing! <laughs> Into kill. <laughs> like, like. It's, not, it's not PTFO. Niggas try to tell me like when that shit first came out, it's just like Dirty Bomb, you gotta play the objective. That shit ain't like no, no fucking Dirty Bomb, no. bro. It's like, all about the kills and that shit. We don't, it's usually fucking... All you gotta do is push the payload. You don't have to do nothing else. Well, you can't you push it if niggas ain't dying. Exactly, yeah. you gotta get them. Like, real talk, we don't play that much Overwatch, but we play a lot of Paladins, which I won't lie, is almost the exact same game. Yeah. And, like, the way we play that is, like, one dude will pick a tank and just sit on the payload, and everybody else goes and kills. While the tank is just like, I'm just gonna do the payload, that's it. So, but he's not doing the payload because he's doing the payload. He's doing the payload because everybody else is dead. So he ain't got nobody to oppose him. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like that's and that's how you, you get away with that shit. Like, you know what I mean? That's not an objective-based game. It's not. No, it's not. I I agree. I do agree. Now, CS:GO, I will say, does have a decent amount of ob- objectives. I will say, CS:GO was like one of the like. This probably isn't completely true, but I feel like games like Battlefield got their objective-based modes from CS:GO. I mean, like they took reference like, from CS:GO modes yeah. and was like, let's get that and make it like modern. Not to say CS:GO is not modern. You mean like Counter Strike in general? Yeah, like you know what I mean. Like how there's like like how in Battlefield there is uh uh that rush. Yeah, there's like rush. Ooh, rush or there's right. like what is it? Domination. Rush is good. Yeah, you know what I mean. Domination. Like where you have to like getting kills doesn't matter. It really is about disarming yeah, the bomb fucking... or or, <laughs> yeah. or taking the the hill or or capturing the flak whatever. Like it really does come down to doing the objective. I feel like games like Battlefield got their modes from CS:GO. Yeah. Like from a game like that cuz like that's the OG like go defuse the bomb. <laughs> that's like true. That's the that's OG. All I, that's all I see people playing in CS:GO. Exactly. Fucking... S and D, pretty much. Exactly. But I'm all right. All right. So that's pretty good. Let's go to the next one. The next category is, and I know a good a good amount of this one. I don't know if you guys are too familiar with these, but it's best debut indie game. So it's basically each company's like, like first. first step into the gaming community, essentially. Oh. Um, and the nominees are Donut Country, Florence, Moss. For what games though? These are the games. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he said, for what games? These are the games. These are the games. Oh. So, okay, nominee one is Donut Country. <sighs> nominee two is Florence. Mm-hmm. Nominee three is Moss. Nominee four is The Messenger. And nominee five is Yoku's Island Express. I may have pronounced that wrong. I apologize for any of you that ritualistically love that game. I thought he was naming the fucking devs, bro. No, no. Would you like shit. me to name the devs though? You mean Donut County? What did I say? Donut uh, Country. Oh, my, my dumb ass fault. <laughs> <laughs> you know I can't read. Um, so, I mean, I played bits of each of these games and the ones I haven't played I've looked up. Honestly, I have to give mad respect to each of these games. Um, games like Florence kind of weren't my take. Um, it's a game I would never buy, but I still have to respect the the developer for coming out with it. It was very artistic, um, not in the sense of the art itself, because the art was somewhat simplified, but artistic in the way of it was unique. You know what I mean? Um, in terms of overall gameplay, it would be between Moss and uh, Island Express, just because those two are the most full fledged games. They're like. 3D fully realized games. Although I think Island Express was a 2D side scroller, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Um, but they are fully animated 3D modeled games, while the other ones, like The Messenger, is a sprite based game. Yeah. It's like a 2D sprite based <laughs> game. And Donut uh, County and Florence are both like a drawn art based games, like yeah. 2D art. So uh, Moss and uh, Island Express are like, you know, I gotta give it to him for that. I never oh, The Messenger. Yeah. Okay, The Messenger's like Ninja Gaiden. Yeah, yeah. Basically. It's like like hack and slash, yeah. but 2D. Yeah. Um, each of these games, it's really hard to pick just one, just because each of these are completely different, like fully different games. So it's really hard to say which one, but I mean, honestly, the category is best debut, so it's like which one impact the most. Um, so, I mean, honestly, fuck, that's, that's even hard. 
I guess I'd probably give it to, like, if I'm obviously rating this on my opinion, I'd say The Messenger. The Messenger is a game that I yeah. would buy, I would play. I'm not a big fan of 2D side-scrollers. Um, Adrian will tell you this, and this is maybe something we'll discuss in another video, but I have no respect for any developers that develop 2D games because I understand that money is an issue, but getting an Unreal license is not hard. I think we did talk about it. You know what I mean? Like, that's not, like, I have, like, it's not that I have no respect for you, but you have no excuse. I understand if you tell me, like, that was your artistic, like, foresight. You, when you saw the vision of your game, you saw a 2D sprite. Now, why you saw a 2D sprite, I'll never fucking understand it. <laughs> but I get it. It maybe was your artistic thought or your artistic vision. I just don't see any excuse not to make a full-fledged, like, 3D game. Well, also, retro is kind of in... When these games started, Why? when these games started being pumped out, retro started coming in. I mean, even music started going backwards. I mean, like, yeah, it, it's, but retro like, is like the thing, like '80s pop, '80s games, but, like, like, like Miami. Yeah, but yeah. Like, my thing is, my thing is, that's the very reason a lot of these indie teams stay indie, because the indie teams that got picked up and became something were the games that tried to go above and beyond the cold retro vibe. You know what I mean? They tried to do more. They tried to make these graphically impressive games. Because, I mean, story is fucking great. Don't get me wrong. Story is phenomenal. But story does not carry a game nowadays. Yeah. Graphics do. Realistically, graphics carry graphics carry a game. What's blowing up? Who's getting uppercutted to the moon? Ex exactly. Like, uh, what's happening? So, like, don't get me wrong. A beautiful story, you'll have that niche audience that was like, damn, I played this game, this shit down there made me cry. But graphics alone is what gets your name on the poster board. Graphics alone is what gets the world looking at your game. You know what I mean? A solid example of that is a Hellblade Sawinya Sacrifice. Mm -hmm. Don't get me wrong, the story in that game is phenomenal. I'm not trying to say the story was bad. But that game, so many people saw it because they saw a high-end, good-looking hack and slash. That's what they saw. They saw a graphically beautiful hack and slash game. Then when they played it because they were already reeled in by these phenomenal graphics, they was like, holy shit, this story made me cry. So then it had both. It's like the full package. It was the full package. Versus fucking Florence, again, no offense, I look at this game and I'm like, uh. <laughs> and then I have that one friend that's like, yeah, you know, I bought this shit when it was on sale, dude. Most amazing story I've ever played. Then I'm like, okay, I guess I'll spend five dollars on it. You know what I mean? So it's like, why? Why do you see two D sprites? Why? This Ninja Gaiden wannabe would have been much better if it was the current Ninja Gaiden wannabe. It was a three D like. PS2, PS3, Ninja Gaiden. Fucking, like you said, uppercutting motherfuckers to the moon. Basically. You know what, what I mean? people want to see. Not fucking Super Nintendo Ninja Gaiden. <laughs> like, if you're going to copy Ninja Gaiden, why are you copying the one we played fucking 19 years ago? <laughs> like, why? I feel that. Like, that's my opinion. Like, I just, I don't see the point why these indie teams still feel the need to fucking make these weak-ass games. <laughs> but... I digress. Like I said, that's a topic for maybe another podcast. <laughs> All right. So, okay. Actually, here goes the perfect counterexample to that. Best student game. I got to give mad respect to these kids. These are kids that are in college that made these full-fledged games that are either on the PlayStation Network, on the App Store, but making money. And mind you, none of these games are sprite-based games. Most of them are full 3D, 3D realized animated games. That's cool. Exactly. So the first one is Combat 2018, made by Inland Norway University of Applied Sciences in Norway. <coughs> the next one is Dash Quasar, which is made by UC oh, that's, Santa that's Cruz. Oh, Dash Quasar. Yep. The next one is Jera by Diga Pippin. Bible? Bible? In Spain? I'm sorry, I probably butchered that school's name. I'm sorry. The next one is Lif by Isart Digital in France. Again, I probably butchered that name. And then, of course, these motherfuckers have to be in it. The next one is Recharge by MIT. Of course. Yeah. You can't have MIT. anything science-based and not have MIT. Like, <clears throat> so... 
But, like, the only one that is a 2D sprite game is Recharge by MIT. It is a 2D, like, sprite game. All the other ones are, like, full-fledged 3D games that are, like, fully animated. Now, mind you, these are fucking kids in college using fucking college editions of Unreal or uh, 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 Unity. You know what I mean? Using college versions of programs. And if they can fucking make full-on games, why do these indie studios who actually have some kind of a budget, what is their fucking excuse? (laughs) Like, I don't understand that. I got nothing. Like, y'all have no excuse. I I was going to try to come up with something. Yeah, they have no excuse. And then on top of that, these student teams are, like, probably, like, four dudes. One or two guys, you know, in a class. Make this shit in a semester. Versus this indie team worked on his fucking sprite game for the last four years, and it was like forty five of y'all. Dang, no Dude, excuse. I haven't heard of any a lot of these games, so it's like yeah. Like, I, yeah, I'm not into fucking indie. Well, games that's the I thing. Be like... That's the thing, dude. It's because these these creators come out with shit that's just the most phenomenal fucking story ever. So then you don't hear about it because the only people that played it are the weird motherfuckers that look for only a story based <laughs> game. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, ain't nobody fucking played Journey. Man, that shit got a fucking Oscar, but ain't nobody played Journey. Honestly, I started Journey and I was like, nope. And then I turned it exactly. off. Exactly. Like, if I if I don't hear about it and then I turn that shit off in five minutes. I gotta hear about some shit from somebody and then watch videos on it and see if I really want to play that shit before I fucking die, get into a game. Like. like I don't know. If I wanted it, a game like Journey to whisk me away, I'll just go meditate. <laughs> right like honestly right okay but, all right all right so now we get into the real games all right the real real categories the real 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 categories <laughs> so let's start this off with best multiplayer game oh here we go wow. <laughs> call of duty black ops 4 Fuck no destiny 2 the forsaken maybe wow. fortnite monster Man. hunter world oh. and sea of thieves Okay, well, see if these just need not be on the list. Give that shit to Monster Hunter. Give it, they put, honestly, like, the it, most generic, what's the most popular fucking game on Yeah, the basically. Place. Not how good the fucking game is. Like, you know, honestly, I say it's either Sea of Thieves or Monster Hunter World. The like, only different game They're going to give it to Fortnite. Yeah, no, Fortnite's yeah, going to take it. They're going to give but, it to Fortnite. So, like, to me, obviously Call of Duty, okay, yeah, duh. Obviously Destiny, okay, yeah, duh. Fortnite, we already talked about that. Don't need to go over that again. But Monster Hunter World and Sea of Thieves are kind of like they're the ones that actually the deserve. Outsiders. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah. Deserve they deserve this category. Because Monster because, Hunter World, like that yeah, is like, a really good team-based so, game. Exactly, like Monster Hunter World. If you, it had the potential of like you could have a a, a group that had no fucking like meta and still like make that shit work. Yeah, you fucking killed the Anjanath. Like, Ooh, you killed the, blank, the Basil Geist. Ooh, <laughs> you fuck, killed Nergi Dante. Fuck the Basil Geist. <laughs> fuck that mother. Fuck him and his one shot and ass grenades. Fuck him. Yep. Fuck him. Fuck him. Fuck him. Yeah. I can fight everybody else, but fuck that yeah. old chin bomb dropping piece of shit. I hate him. <laughs> He's killing me so many fucking times <laughs> on some bullshit. Yeah. And then you have Sea of Thieves, which that game was just boring fun and I know that sounds like a contradiction but like me and Adrian we saw that game we were like this is stupid but then we played it and we found oh ourselves sailing the high seas so it, season was, season. it was it was <laughs> immediately funny because we sunk our own ship <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like that game was just boring relentless fun and then we ran into these kids who were like racist as fuck and they were like my character I made a fat old lady and I was talking about fucking everybody <laughs> and they were trying to kill us it was just it was that game like, it was just nonsense. ridiculous <laughs> nonsense that game was just nonsense so that game genuinely deserves this category cause it make like in a lot of games like in a game like let's say Monster Hunter World or I mean none of these games really do that okay we'll say Destiny there's a lot of situations where maybe you run into town or you run into a vendor and you see other people but you do not interact with them whatsoever. Yeah. Yeah. You see them, buy what you want to buy, and keep it moving. Maybe if you need to do an objective, you'll go into an instant queue, you'll turn your mic off, do the match, fucking leave the match, be like, thanks for helping me, go on about your business. Sea of Thieves has the exact opposite effect. 
everyone you see, you're either ready to fight or ready to join their crew. Yeah, it's one, it's one of the two. It's one of the two. Like, there, like, every player you see, there is an interaction happening. That game is a true multiplayer. Like, every person you see, there's an interaction. But it don't matter what the fuck we say. When Fortnite yeah, Fortnite's going to fucking all these stupid-ass motherfucking so, kids want to do fucking dances and shit yeah. you see in the club, you old dumb bastard. <laughs> so, yeah, like I said, honestly, I would give it to either Monster Hunter or Sea of Thieves, but... We all know who's gonna win. Bro, did you tell this nigga what happened when we was on the way to Six Flags? <laughs> so Sorry. not even five minutes after leaving this area, we go on that little back road behind like Superior to go out to Oxnard, mm-hmm. and right by the fence there's these dumbass kids crossing the street. One of them decides to do one of the dumb Fortnite dances in the middle of the street. <laughs> then he looks at us directly in the car and does it again, like we like he wanted our approval, <laughs> like if it was good. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> wow. He, oh, like, he looked, he looked dead at us and did the move again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's fucking stupid. Just in oh, case my. y'all didn't see it the first time. <laughs> because I'm popular. Man. There you go. Oh, my God. <laughs> that shit was hilarious, bro. All right. So next category is best sports slash racing game. And the nominees are FIFA 2019. Forza Horizon 4, Mario Tennis Aces, <laughs> NBA 2K19, 2K is getting it. and Pro Evolution Soccer 2019. It's between 2K for the sports and FIFA, but I'm going to give it to 2K because people kill each other over that game. People kill each other over like, that game. Like, literally, they kill each other over Forza that game. On it, or not Forza, I mean, that and uh, FIFA. Yeah. I want Forza to win just because I love there racing games. one racing game Yeah, there? there was literally one Forza racing game. Forza deserves it, Nobody even make it no fucking racing <laughs> games no more. <laughs> um, but no, no Forza to me. You forgot about the crew. <laughs> I will say though, Forza to me was is the apex of the Forza Horizon series. Mm-hmm. Oh, like, man. I will say Forza Horizon did kind of the thing where it was like they got one simple feature and then built an entirely new game for that one feature. So like, if you play Forza Horizon three and then you play Forza Horizon four, they're the same fucking game. But then Forza Horizon four now has a seasonal system. So there actually is like a winter, a summer, a fall, Mm -hmm. and a spring. That was like the whole niche of that game. And it was like, that's really the only difference. There's a different um, landscape. So three is in Australia, four is in, I think, Europe. So like the landscape or the map is obviously different. I personally liked Australia way fucking better. Um, And then obviously they have updated cars, a slightly newer car selection. But in terms of the overall core gameplay, same fucking game. But even with that all being said, I will say Forza Horizon 4 is the apex of the series. Like, Forza Horizon 4 is the best Forza Horizon. I don't want to fuck Mario's in there. Well, I played Mario Tennis, and that game is real. Yeah, it's wrong. That game is is real. Don't let the name Mario. Yeah, don't, don't. Don't. I played matches with people who knew what the fuck they were doing. I'm like, this game is serious, but it's not gonna win. Yeah, it's, it it won't. It's most likely gonna be 2K or FIFA, but we'll see. We'll see. Maybe we'll be surprised. So the next one is best strategy game, and the nominees are The Banner Saga Three. I don't know that. BattleTech. I don't know that either. Frostpunk. Nope. And to the breach. I have no idea. <laughs> in Valkyrie Chronicles Four. That game was stupid. <laughs> so. I don't do strategy at all. Hand, hands down, I give it to Frostpunk. Um, and that's honestly like hands down Frostpunk. I've played or seen all of these games. Valkyrie Chronicles Four was too monotonous. Yeah, Valkyrie. Really, it was. It was like. It was too. I don't know. It was just dry. Yeah, it was that. Yeah, it was just really dry, especially for the Valkyrie series. Also, the story in four was like. Yeah, it ass. wasn't good to me. It just was um, not engaging. And to the breach was decent, but uh, if I'm not mistaken, it was a two D side scroller or two D game, so you automatically <laughs> lose points. Damn, he gave that um, no chance. Batter Saga three, honestly, is fucking amazing, but you also kind of really have to play one and two to completely get it. And that to me kind of pulls from it, whereas in Frostpunk, it's a, a it's a base builder game. It's one of those games where you basically build a settlement and you're trying to basically see how long can your settlement last. I can't do that shit. But the entire game is like the concept is you're fighting the cold. Yeah, Into the Breach is a two D top down. Yeah, um, yeah, but Frostpunk was like completely like 
frozen wasteland, everything's frozen over, and you're trying to fight the breach, you're trying to fight the cold. Wait, didn't I watch you play... No, it's a different Frostpunk? game. No, 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 you watched me play uh, Dead to Silence. Yeah, that's what yeah. it was. Okay. So I, I personally say Frostpunk takes it. Oh, that's all you. I don't know shit about those games. All right. Except that I didn't like Valkyrie Chronicles. Now, uh, let's hear the, um, <laughs> the Nintendo, uh, basically, the Nintendo nominees. Best family game. Yeah. That's basically basically yeah. every game is fucking Nintendo, basically. Uh, so it's Mario Tennis Aces, mm -hmm. Nintendo Labo. Nah. What? <laughs> uh, over, you fucking kidding me? Overcooked 2. Overcooked was good. Uh, Overcooked. Starlink Battle for Atlas. Nah. And Super Mario Party. Nah, Super Mario Party. Super yeah. Mario Party. I say Super Mario Party. Super Mario Starlink Party. Battle for Atlas is not a family game. I don't understand why it's in this category. What it's, is this? It's a... Imagine... Imagine... <laughs> what the fuck is the name of that game? Your brain just stopped. It did. Um, what the fuck's the name of that game? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> The game where you go out in space and there's like 80 quintillion planets. No Man's Sky. Okay, imagine No Man's Sky before the update if it was actually good. Wow. Right, <laughs> right that's essentially what Starlink Battle for Atlas is. That's it's, not a family game. That's too oh, and then combine it with Disney's Infinity. That's too complicated for people. It kind of is. So, like, the concept of the game is you explore planets and every planet is like a full-fledged planet. It's not just like a tiny map on the planet. It's like a full planet. And you have a little ship, and you just fly planet to planet. Like I said, it's basically No Man's Sky for kids. Yeah, basically. Wow. Mario Party. Like, yeah, you go to each planet, you collect resources, yada, yada, yada. But as far as I know, it was a one- to two-player game, and there really wasn't much more than that. Yeah, like... And, like, obviously, like, you know, you fight enemies, and you collect species and stuff like that. Yeah, but that's too much. It's a, but, we're talking family. And then when I say, like, the Disney's Infinity... It does actually have, like, an attachment that you attach to the controller, and there's, like, Lego pieces, and you build your spaceship. And then when you build it in real life, you attach it to the controller, and then that's what your spaceship that's is. That's too in much. Right. As a family, <laughs> I want to pop the game in. You, 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 do A, B, C. I mean, let's go. I honestly say Super Mario Party. I, 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 I actually like Overcooked. And I wouldn't even call that a family game. You like a game? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> Overcooked? That's how that shit is. Um, <laughs> Overcooked is fucking fun as fuck, man. No, it is. It it is. is. I could imagine playing that shit with some little kids, and they wouldn't know what the fuck to do. And I'd be like, look, you gotta fucking cook the rice. I'm gonna cook the motherfucking chicken. I, you stay over there. Like, that shit would be ridiculous, bruh. I get like... <laughs> That's funny. You cook the fucking motherfucking rice. Oh. Them niggas be running around and shit. Like, I could, like, man. Ugh. Like, it's so much coordination and shit with that shit. Nigga, that really shit gets is. complicated. And I'm the type of motherfucker, I want to go for the three stars all yep, the time. Yep, you the, yep. you a bitch ass nigga. Like, I was playing that shit with, with Chris and them and shit. He said that with Chris, so Jeff, loud. and fucking, uh, who the fuck else was playing? That nigga Nate, probably. And we was playing that shit, and we was doing this hard ass one that we couldn't beat. We finally beat that shit, got like two stars. And he was I like, was "No, like, no we, we doing it again. We gotta get the motherfucking three stars. We ain't no little bitches. <laughs> Y'all niggas wanna take the two stars and be like, yeah." What the fuck, nigga? Come on, son. We some grown ass man. This fucking little kid ass game. Y'all niggas wanna take two stars? <laughs> 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 Grown ass man, this is a little kid game. That's like the first rant. I was, you should have just gotta keep going. Right? He was on a roll. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut he you was, off. He was on a roll. Nah, he, I, was, I was that, but I was dying. He said, We a little That's bitch ass, we some grown ass man. We got like three motherfuckers. Oh my god. I'm right. Oh man, that was so, great. This next category is y'all through and through. It's for y'all. It's fighting game. Best fighting game. Oh, here we go. <laughs> Blaze Blue Cross Tag Battle. Nah. Dragon Ball Z Fighter Z. Maybe. Right. Or Dragon Ball Fighter Z. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Soul Calibur Six. Nah. Too and early. can you guys guess the final nominee? Street Fighter Five. Yep. Street really? Fighter Five. Arcade Edition. Specific. Well, because Arcade, arcade edition, edition is what now. Five should have been when it first came out. <clears throat> I have my yeah. opinion on this, but my opinion is not nearly as it's still well valid. thought as you guys. You guys are. Uh, you love fighters, so I'll let y'all primarily discuss it, and then I'll sprinkle my snips in here and there. All right. You know, you know why DBZ takes that shit? 
It, that game is complex. It takes that shit because it beat Street Fighter for, for entries. It did. At Evo. At Evo. They, more people entered for Dragon Ball than they did for Street Fighter. And that's it why also had a bigger... That's why that shit takes it. It also okay. had almost a large... It had a pretty large viewing base. Okay, okay, um, okay. The game is also very complex. The game is not simple. Like, the setups, the timing of the game, like, if you drop a combo, it is your fault. Like, it's not... Yeah. You can't abuse... There's option timing selects, and I'm not gonna get into option selects, but for the most part in that game, like, the timing of you inputting things is crucial, you know, okay. and the, the combo... There's also a couple things we don't like, like the auto combos. Yeah, auto combos. I'm never a fan of auto combos. I don't, I don't like the meta... Because it's just lock somebody down and do mix-ups until you get the hit. And until you hit them to out. start your, like, world-ending combo. Yeah. But that's, like, most tag fighters. But, like, it... it be, out out the gate, it did better than Street Fighter. Okay. Out the gate, it did better than Soul Calibur. Because Soul Calibur was kind of recovering from its, like, what, five? From, from, from yeah. five being ass. Yeah, from five being so ass. So five was bad, so they had to make up for it. Where yeah. DBZ started brand, like, that was a brand new, like, IP for, like, that. They were like, oh, and it took out Marvel, because Marvel killed itself. Yeah. So oh, yeah. it was like... But, but here's the thing, though. Marvel sucked. Street Mar Fighter sucked. Marvel was garbage. Something had to come out and be great, and it, it just so happened to be... And it was, it was Dragon yeah. Ball. Like, if Street yeah. Fighter came out now the way... Like, if it came out back then with all the shit it had now, it would probably take number one. Just because... So then you guys say, the for, this, for this category, you say... DBZ, DBZ fighter for sure. Wasn't okay. there like one more we just did but, not even mention? Uh, Blaze Blue uh, Cross. Oh yeah, no, yeah, yeah fuck that. Y'all didn't even <laughs> talk about that. <laughs> okay, nah. all right. So DBZ so takes Calendar, that. that fucking uh, character system. They doing some big shit with that. Yeah, yeah. They doing some big shit. Like, all right, let's see. So the next category is best RPG, hmm. and the nominees are Dragon Quest Eleven, Echoes of. Elusive I for, Age. I forgot. They're almost in the teens for that fucking series. Yep. What uh, game was that? Dragon. Dragon, Dragon Quest. Quest. The one where the characters look basically like Navi. Dragon Ball Z characters. Yeah. Same. Uh, Monster Hunter World. Oh, that shit. That's Mino so cool. Kuni Two. Mm, nah. Octopath Traveler. What? And Pillars of Eternity Two: Deadfire. I'm going with uh, Monster Hunter. Just because I know that one. I would say of these categories, I'm a bit familiar with each of them. I would say Monster Hunter World just because... So the, 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 the definition of RPG has kind of changed a lot over the years and what an actual RPG is has kind of been reworked or it's such a broad category now. So, like, originally RPG is obviously role-playing game right. where the concept was you play the role of someone else. Mm -hmm. You're not in control of the story. You're playing the story through someone else's eyes, right. right? But then over time, RPGs kind of became your story where you may be controlling a different character or maybe it does let you can create a character, but ultimately the story is somewhat up to you. You make choices. You kind of, you know, go the way you want to go. And now it's kind of like this weird mix mash where if it's not any of the other categories, then I guess it's an RPG. You know what I mean? Like, well, yeah, that's kind of what it became. The different, the distinction for me was pretty much when I look at a game and you do, if you hit somebody and numbers come out, and, <laughs> and you have a, a level up system, that's pretty much an RPG. <laughs> that's kind of what I said as well. And honestly, that's what most of the, the the world says now, too. Where, like, they'll get a racing game and, like, okay, like, no joke. And when the crew first came out, they were like, oh, they've added RPG elements to a racing game. And it was like, how? Yeah. Well, it's, because, it's because as you play the game, you, you unlock up, car yeah. parts that level up. Yeah. And you level up your that's, vehicle. And they were like, not, yeah, they've added RPG elements to a car game. And it was like, who said that? Though? What? I think that's it was how like. racing games work. You yeah, upgrade your fucking you upgrade car. Your, <laughs> but like, <laughs> well, that's why I was like, he said, how? RPG nowadays has like the weirdest open ended like explanation yeah, now. It's like if, if something uh, levels yes. you up and you have to kind of like yeah. grind for it, it's like, oh, it's RPG. Even though everything else is not RPG. Now, of the explained definitions, the one that I like the most is where you can somewhat control the flow of the story. That's the one I like the most. Mm. Not where you completely control it, but the one where you have a little bit of, like, left and right wiggle room, you know? Mm. And in my opinion of these, what is it, five nominees, five or six nominees, Monster Hunter World does that the most. Mm-hmm. 
Um, just in the sense of, like, you get to decide what monster you fight when, how you fight them, who you're fighting them with, things like that. Whereas, like, the other ones have a very straightforward right, it's pretty linear, linear story. Um, a, a lot of these are open world, so you can kind of explore. Like, Nino Kuni 2 is an open world game, so you can explore. But still, the, the very sense of evolving the game or going to the next step is a very straightforward linear path. Whereas in Monster Hunter, there were certain missions where it was like, you have to do this. Yeah, those are the ones that would change, like, you being in the beginning of the game to the end. Yeah, exactly. Like, but then, like, that, like, from point A to point B, it was a zigzag. Yeah. It wasn't a straight line. You didn't have to fight them in any specific exactly. order, except for the ones that mattered. Exactly. And I very much so liked that. And then again, it's very open-ended, where, like, in Nino Kuni 2, just as an example... There are different weapons or different weapon classes. You can switch between characters, but every character only could use a set amount of weapons. So then if you liked this character, but you liked that weapon, you may not be able to put those two together. That guy might only be a gunner, so he can't use a sword. So whenever you want to use the gunner, you have to use him. And if you wanted to use the sword, you have to use that guy. Whereas Monster Hunter World gave you that option. Yeah. You wanted to use dual swords, pop them out. You wanted to use the broadsword, pop it out. You want to use the gun lance, bring it out. And I liked that. I liked that little bit of wiggle room. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, so that's my opinion. That's my opinion. I and can't then also, really say much about that. Yeah, that's just me. Give it to Monster Hunter. Yeah, right. Monster Hunter takes it. All right, this is a fun category right here. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh this is also the category, uh, starting from here on out, Assassin's Creed, Marvel, Spider-Man, and uh, Red Dead Redemption are damn there in every category. Damn. Damn there. Not every... Oh, and God of War. Yeah. Are in damn there every category starting from here on out. So, the next category is Best Action Slash Adventure Game. The nominees are Assassin's Creed Odyssey, God of War, Marvel Spider-Man, Red Dead Redemption 2, and Shadow of the Tomb Raider. God of War. <laughs> you really say so? Yeah, God of War. God of, War. Of, of those, so to me, Shadow of Tomb Raider is at the bottom of the bucket. Oh yeah, I'm sorry. They're, they're not. Shadow of it's Tomb Raider. It's at the bottom of the bucket. None of that. Um, God of War was like, as far as action, like holy shit. It's, yeah, it's if like, we're saying action adventure that's, that's God game, of War. God of War, hands that's, down. That's, watching their journey was ridiculous. Yeah, the action was just through the roof. The next closest is Assassin's Creed yeah. Odyssey yeah. in terms of like. The hype, the action, the ridiculousness, the craziness. God of War is literally in first place. The story honestly wasn't bad. A lot of people are saying Kratos is like, oh, father of the year. But I mean, in my opinion, and I might be a little crucified for this, he's as much of a good father as Goku. In my Ooh. opinion. <laughs> but no, because like the thing is, he went a life of bad choices and then a few moments of good choices and people are now saying he's a great father. Yeah, because people the, are because the comparison is so drastic. Well people are like <gasps> It's also a lot of the comparison is off screen. Yeah. That they don't they explain but they don't show you. That's true. Kratos went what mm -hmm. what was his son? Thirteen years old, twelve mm -hmm. years old, twelve years lying to his son, forcing him to get sick. I'm sorry if I spoiled that for you. Uh, so, overall, <laughs> the no. story in a nutshell, for those of you that don't know and spoiler alert, spoilers. Spoiler alert. Also, yes, spoilers, is that Kratos has a son, a biological son, that is both a Greek god and a Norse god. But instead of telling him of his heritage, he lies to him and says, no, you're just a mortal, you're fine. But that basically starts to destroy his son's body but instead of just being like hey son you're a god just don't make the same mistakes i had granted it wouldn't be as easy as just saying it but instead of trying that he lies to him for x amount of years and then by the time we play the game at the end of the fucking game kratos is finally like okay sorry son you're actually a god you're a double god actually <laughs> you're a double god you're a norse god and a greek god like and to me it was like he's how does that blood. make you father of the fucking year a giant that's what he was a giant yeah he's a giant and um well he's he's loki yeah he's loki he's literally loki huge spoiler alert he's loki yeah, he's loki because his mean, mom is a frost giant yeah he is loki and then he's or the son giant. of kratos so okay technically demigod and demigod if you want to be overly technical Okay. He's like the ultimate demigod. Yeah, he's like the ultimate demigod. You know what I mean? Get in the boat, boy. 
Like, <laughs> legit, the boat, it's the equivalent of if Thor and Hera had a child. You know what I mean? Like, that's what you have here. So he's OP. So he's OP. You know what I'm saying? So, like, and... and, and but Jerome, Kratos was trying to train him so that way when he became a god, he kept his life under control. No, but that's what a because good all that's gonna does. do, all that's <laughs> gonna do is make him resent his father and go on a mass killing spree in some way. But he didn't. He loved his father. Yeah, you're right. At the end of the day, he did. <laughs> no, actually, there got to be the next Kratos. There came a point though where after he told him he was a god, the little boy the, started, the little boy going, started crazy. going crazy. He, he was like, "No, we don't need to fight these weaklings." I was like, "Hey, hey, yeah. calm down, kid." Like, no, it got to the point where like, because like honestly, that's how you would feel. His son was low key bullied. Well, not like bullied, but his son was like living at the bottom his whole life, and then you find out you are the top. Not you're on the top. You are the top. Yeah. The top of the totem pole is defined by you. Yeah, I'm about to start like, fucking blasting He would kill people. Like He'd be like, Father, why didn't you just kill him? He's <laughs> useless. I was like, God damn. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, it got, I became a father. I was like, look, hold on, boy. Yeah. You no, calm down. I'm also, <laughs> like, don't get me wrong. Kratos actually, if you've played all the games and actually seen all the games, Kratos actually is a family man. He just hurt. He's it. always been for his it. family. Angry. There was actually, I think it's uh, Shadow Shadows of Olympus, I think. The one for PS... There's one of the ones for PSP where the entire point of the game is him taking an adventure to save his daughter from being thrown off of the mountain that, like, Spartans Yeah. Did. That was the whole point of the game. He was trying to save his daughter. So, like, don't get me wrong. Kratos is a family man. He's always been for his family. But, like, people are literally, like, when that game came out, they were like, oh, he's the greatest father on Earth. Okay. Oh, wait. No, he's not. He's, he's not. Just, he's just not as... He's not as bad as Goku. Goku's yeah, just he's not, not a father. I was just <laughs> upset. Goku is an estranged uncle. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so, I was a little upset when I said that. Oh, no, I understand. Like, it's just I thought about it. I was like, Goku wasn't even there. As a matter of fact, he almost killed his son. And now, he killed himself. But, like, so we're talking about God of War in terms of sheer epicness. But, like, yeah. let me bring up another valid point. Excellent story. Oh, yeah. Both Red Dead and, and Spider-Man almost made me cry. They both had my eyes watering. By the end of All the right, day, like, look. they both made my eyes water. Look. Like, Spider-Man. Even, even think about Arthur now. I won't talk about that. Look, <laughs> Spider-Man, I, I will give it as far as story to Spider-Man because, and this is like nitpicky just for me, spoiler alert again, because at the end of Red Dead, it doesn't, like, you play even more, so you kind of forget about that moment. No, like you're the moment right, happened right. at Spider Man, it's like, oh shit, this motherfucker's dead, and that's like the end of it. No, you're basically. right. Basically, yo, you're absolutely right. That's for me. Say, Red Dead gave you so much of a resolution, and as they say, the denouement. Mm -hmm. They gave you so much of it that the climax didn't even—you didn't even feel it anymore. No, it gave you way too much resolution. Could you have like three more hours yeah, of gameplay? Like, yeah, that. like you play as Arthur, you hit the climax as Arthur, and then it's literally four and a half hours of playing as John Marston. So you just the, the connection of like, like yeah, that moment is it gone. burns it out of you. So like I, I agree with you. Whereas in Spider Man, again spoilers, you play as Spider Man, you defeat Doc Ock, Doc Ock dies or goes to jail, whatever. They have their fucking wannabe father son moment, mm -hmm. and it hurts. And then the game's over like ten minutes later. Well, cause yeah, he goes to the bed. He's like, oh no, oh no. Yeah. And I was like, I was and then Aunt May dies because <laughs> you make the ultimate choice to save the city. That shit burns into your soul. Remember, I came out the room. <laughs> like, I was like. No joke. He was outside of the room. I was like, no, they did it. Yeah. They killed her. This bitch is dead. Like, I was losing yeah. my mind. Like, it hurts. They killed and then her. on top of that, it, 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 like, the game, I'll say this, like, Red Dead, they both did different types of good storytelling to me. Yeah. Where, like, Red Dead made you fall in love with Arthur as a it character. really As did. you're playing Red Dead 2, you start off like, okay, Arthur, whatever, who are you, whatever. No big deal. As you start to play the game, as you start to develop the story, you do start to love Arthur. Like, you genuinely start to well, care about this man. He had a very human element to exactly. him. Exactly. He was very human. Un unlike Spider-Man, because, well, you know. Yeah, exactly. Spider-Man. So then, at the end of the game, again, spoilers, this nigga gets tuberculosis and dies. Yeah, and he's fighting it the whole Yeah, and he's fighting it. Game. Like, he's fighting <laughs> like, it for, like, two chapters. This He is fighting it while still trying to save and redeem the lives of his fellow gang members. Yeah. That shit was deep. Yeah. That shit was fucking deep. Like... Right? That shit, when he started coughing, I was like, no. Yeah, like, it no, was don't crazy. Do don't die on me. Whereas Spider-Man did the, like, the punch in the face that makes you love the story. Mm -hmm. Where, like... 
every time the story got just dull enough, it would hit you with something crazy yeah. where you're like, whoa, they did that! <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, that's literally how the game was. Where, like, it'd be like, okay, you start the game off. Like, okay, so obviously, uh, Insom oh obviously Insomniac revealed the Insomniac <laughs> Spider-Man suit long before the game came out. But you start the game in the classic suit, right? which was cool. You're like, yay, classic Spider-Man. Suit gets beat up. Then you go back home, you redesign a new suit. This nigga walks outside in the Insom Insomniac suit, and it was like, whoa, the fucking suit looks amazing! Yeah. <laughs> Again, you're already kind of numb to it because you've seen the trailers by this point, so you already know what the suit looks like, so the reveal was already kind of wasted. Because you don't get it for like a while. Doc, yeah. Doc Ock makes the suit. Exactly. And so you're it was like, like, holy shit! So then you're playing the game for a little bit, and then they introduce fucking uh, MJ, and then you get to play as MJ, and it's like, whoa, I get to play as MJ, yeah. right? So then you kind of get bored of playing as MJ. Like, She's okay, a I've bitch, by the that. way. Then you fucking, they introduce Miles Morales, and the sheer introduction of Miles Morales, yeah, you're like, whoa, Miles Morales! <laughs> like, then they you get to play as Miles Morales, yeah. and you're like, whoa! Oh, I can play as Miles Morales! <laughs> like, or, like, at the very, very end, they hit you again with him? Yeah! Where he, like, he gets bit by the spider, you're like, oh, shit, it happened. Exactly! Oh, shit. So, like... And then he's like, I got powers, too, and he's on the ceiling, I'm like, oh, shit! Yeah. Like, <laughs> so, like, every single time the game got just a slightly bit dull, and something else would happen to punch you in the face and just make you flip shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, when you first meet Doc Ock and he's already, like, in the suit and it does, like, the, he has, like, the tendril things holding him up. Yeah. It's not yet the actual Doc Ock no, suit, it's, but it's, like, the foreshadowing. A, yeah. It was, like, already telling you, damn, I'm about to fight Doc Ock. Yeah. You're like, this, he's about to lose his fucking mind. Or, like, you get, like, halfway through the game and it's like, bam, Sinister Six. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's true, and you gotta you know fight I mean? him, and you gotta, and you fight, gotta him. fight him. Like, every single time the game even got remotely boring, it, like, kicks you in the chest. And it was just like, holy shit. Like, yeah. And to me, that's another form of good storytelling, because it's another way to keep me invested. Yep. Where you're not necessarily upping the ante every time, but you're hitting me with that same exact level of emotion every single time so in a way that keeps it fresh definitely for action i'm giving it to god of yeah. war for action. now i'll say in terms of the raw exploration and the raw quest odyssey takes it oh yeah well, odyssey's cause... grand scale to me was just beautiful you travel continents yeah like literally sailing the greek world fighting medusa fighting the minotaur fighting the cyclops literally fighting in some of the most iconic well-known spartan wars literally being an olympian or uh, not being an olympian but playing in the olympic games like this game it was like damn like is there any part of greece they left out <laughs> like fucking talking to Socrates and letting this nigga fucking I can't stand him irritate the fuck out of you God, was what, what, what did he say he was a, he's a living contradiction yeah, he, this nigga at one point was like oh I am not making an argument I am merely making a suggestion in which I have an opinion that is pointless in which to get you to think <laughs> I was like what <laughs> He really talks like that. He really talks, he really like, really that. talks like that. But, like, you love and hate the I mean, conversation. It's Socrates, yeah, it's Socrates. So it was like you love and hate it all at the same time. That's hilarious. Yeah, so, like, in, in right, terms... What about the fucking Animus? Are these niggas in the Animus? No, they are. Yes, they are. <laughs> they are. <laughs> so, but it was so at all. It's still part of the Animus. There <laughs> is still the out of the Animus story. There still is the whole Templars versus the it's Assassin's story. It's just not story. a huge focal yeah, It's point. just not the focal point of the series. But, like, there's... But that's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what it is. Well, no, they, they take you out, and then they tie it together. You're like, oh. Yeah, no. And that's another thing I really oh, loved gosh. about this one and Origins. They actually tied in the reason why you're in the animus where like the other ones kind of did but this one is like legit ass like the reason you're in the animus is to do this yeah they, like, they make it you play as like the the outside characters like a little bit deeper i guess yeah so like in the originals it'd be like oh we're just trying to figure out like in the first game you were just trying to figure out where the apple of eden was yeah and the excuse was you couldn't because your connection to the uh to the uh, descendant wasn't as tight, you couldn't just jump to the direct moment. 
you had to play a chain of events to that moment. Yeah. That's where the adventure comes from. But realistically, it was like, you've made some technology where I can <laughs> literally live out my ancestors. <laughs> and not like my 116th ancestors. My ancestors that are like, if I was to look at my bloodline, that are like 500 times removed. And you're telling me you can't just jump to the exact moment that you need me to jump to? <laughs> Some bullshit. That don't make no damn sense. Like, that's like telling me, like, you invented an airplane that can't fly. <laughs> like, that just don't make sense to me. Like, I didn't accept that. But then in this one, they're like, oh, we're trying to uh, use the Spear of Leonidas and understand how it works. Yeah. And understand where its power came from. You know what I mean? So then the, the playing this game, watching the character use the spear and level it up and empower it made sense. All right. Because there wasn't just one moment you could instantly jump to and be like, yep, there's your answer. What? You want Buffalo Spot? Do you want anything? Um, trying not to make noise. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to take a brief intermission. Oh, is this what we had last time? Yes. Um, all right, we had to take a brief intermission. I know via the recording it's not going to seem like that because it's spliced together. It's so close. But no, there is there there was a break. We are back now to continue our discussion of the video game awards. What is garbage? What is not? What is God? What is the devil? All right, let's go. What is God? What is not? All right, we need to get off this category. All right, all right, so we're done with that category. We're going to move on. Next category. Best action game. Call of Duty Black Ops 4. I'm sick of that shit. <laughs> Dead Cells. No. Destiny 2 The Forsaken. Oh, my God. Far Cry 5. Oh. And Mega Man 11. So, I'm going to say Far Cry 5 just because that game let me feel like a country yokel. This, I'm <laughs> saying this just because I really don't like any of the games on the list. Mega Man 11. <laughs> what the hell was Dead Cells? It's a oh, 2D. it's like a 2D side. Not a side scroll. Wasn't, wasn't it like an asymmetric? No, that's a side scroller. It was. It wasn't a side scroller. It's actually, in it all honesty, hack and slash. It, it's it's pretty action packed. Like Dead Cells is pretty fucking. It action was pretty action. It got like it didn't get an award, but it got like rave reviews. Well, it might get an award now. It might. It's like in all honesty, like outside of being dumb, like it's it's pretty action packed. All right, all right. All right anything but Call of Duty. Yeah, I'm <laughs> sick. I'm, I'm sick of Call of Duty. All right. So the best, the next one is best VR slash AR game. Astrobot Rescue Mission. That sounds stupid. Beat Saber. That's kind of Firewall cool. Zero Hour. No, I don't like that. Moss and mm. Tetris Effect. Ooh, so, that Tetris Effect was kind of crazy. Tetris Effect. I, honestly, I say it's between Tetris uh, Effect and uh. Tetris Effect is like a very very close, but I honestly say it's between Firewall Zero Hour and Beat Saber. Beat Saber is pretty cool. Uh, I see Beat Saber fucking everywhere. Like, yeah, <clears throat> Firewall. Imagine um. Siege, if it was VR. It's literally Siege, but VR. Oh, I'll like, give it to that. That is exactly cool. what that game is. It's Sounds like, it's it's Siege, fire. but VR. And like, it's not like a cheap wannabe VR wannabe. It's like <laughs> legit, like, high action gameplay. What's it called? It's called Firewall Zero Hour. I got like, it's, it's, it's pretty dope. My like, ass Firewall. Yeah, it's pretty dope. And then Beat Saber is also just amazing. I mean, you got fucking Star Wars and put music in it. <laughs> basically. <Yeah. laughs> basically. So, like, I, mean, I say it's like, low-key. That should oh. be trash, but you could put, like, any game, yeah. I mean, any song in that motherfucker. Exactly. That's, like, like, that's, that's yeah. dope. I might give it to that, but Firewall looks pretty immersive. Yeah, it's, I, it's literally Siege, but VR. Like, it's, like, that game is great. <laughs> that um, great. That Astro Bots game, I don't think is, no... Because it's like one of those little like tech demos for the PlayStation VR. So it's not like a full-fledged game. It's like a little tech demo. So it's not all that great. Tetris Effects is great, but the reason it's great is because it's pretty. Yeah, it's really it's pretty. It's just Tetris it's... with a lot of colors. But you know what I mean? Tetris and it's pretty. It is. No, you're right. It's Tetris. But like... It doesn't do much else. It doesn't that, do much honestly. else. It's just Tetris with a lot of colors and particles everywhere. All right. What's the next category? Because right, you don't so have too much time. One. Best mobile game. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's Donut County, Florence, oh my God. Fortnite Mobile, PUBG Mobile. Just give it to Fortnite. And Regions Game of Thrones. Just give it to Fortnite. No, fuck that, PUBG. 
Okay. What's <laughs> <laughs> I will deny them even a mobile award. What's the PUBG point? can have it. What's the point of Best putting mobile. shits in there? All right, we're, we're done with that category. That category is garbage. So, it's poop. I don't understand this. This one is best independent game, and it was like, well, you already did best indie game. So, like, right? <laughs> what's so, the... it's Cele Celeste? Celeste? Celeste, yeah, Celeste. Like that, yeah. Dead Sales, Into the Breach, Return of the Obra Dinn, and The Messenger. Dead Cells. Definitely Dead Cell. That shit did the best, I feel like. Got all of them. I'm gonna skip this. This is stupid. Wait, just name the category. It's Games for Impact. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's and it's like more indie games. So I guess it's like the indie game that left the most impact on you. Oh, yeah, it's thought provoking or pro social meaning for a message. Uh, I don't care about <laughs> um, oh, we have to do this. I'm sorry, we have to. Best performance. So, it's the voice actor. Ooh. So, it's Brian Dierte as Connor in Detroit Becoming Human. Christopher Judge as Kratos, God of War. Ooh. Um, I can't pronounce this girl's name, but the voice actor for Cassandra. Ooh. Uh, Roger Clark as Arthur Morgan. Ooh. <laughs> And Yuri Lothrina? Lothrina as Peter Parker. Fuck! Yeah, and this one, yup. Like, God, like, dang it. All these voice actors did such a great job. Oh. Like, I need to clap for them, but I don't want to waste time. But, like... All right, so Arthur, the voice of Arthur, for sure, is in there. Because yeah. it's... I'm trying to go off of, like, which one when they spoke, like, made me feel anything. And I kind of want to give it to, like... The guy who did Kratos, because when he spoke, I felt like a kid. But the thing is, like, okay, so I'll say this, and you'll probably agree. Kratos, like, the voice actor for Kratos, don't get me wrong, he did a great job. Yeah, he did. But, like, Kratos already had, like... Yeah, he had, like, a phenomenal... Like, thing. not a... Like, he already had, like, something we expected. True. So as long as you match what we expected, we're just going to say you did great. Like, you expect that voice that when he talks makes you feel like a kid. Yeah, like, he said, you know boy, I mean? and like, I started looking around the room. Like, so, he didn't have get, nothing to, like... <laughs> get in the boat, If you boy. will, it was like, it was like... Look at it like this. Okay, here goes my metaphor. Imagine, like, a snow-filled landscape. Mm -hmm. Whereas all the other voice actors, because they're newly fleshed characters, it's them walking through the snow. Like trugging through it on their own. They don't have a path. Yeah. Exactly. Makes versus sense. Kratos, who already has his path laid out. He just has to make sure to walk in the right footsteps. Yeah. You kind of see what I'm getting. Like you kind of see the metaphor. Okay. I, 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 I do agree with that. Yeah. Agree so with like. That. So definitely Arthur Morgan's. The yeah. Voice Arthur, actor like, oh my god. Like, like he for sure. His. <laughs> And then Connor did really good too. It's just I don't know if you saw the end of Detroit. Yeah. Connor honestly, Connor did real like Yeah, yeah. But Connor, I, okay, the difference I'll say for Connor though is it wasn't the voice that made me feel what was going on. Mm -hmm. It was the situation. Yeah, exactly. And his voice just worked with the situation. Mm -hmm. Whereas you have like Cassandra and Arthur where the character was the character because of their voice. Hey, you notice they didn't put uh, the guy for Assassin's Creed Odyssey? Yeah. Cause no, I told you, was everybody garbage. loved Cassandra. Yeah. Cause like, they just said Cassandra was I heard, I heard that guy talking, I was like, ugh. Yeah. Oh, and then Peter Parker kind of has the same thing as Kratos. Yeah. Where it's like, there's something we're expecting already, so his path is kind of already laid out. You just kind of have to make I'm gonna it, give it I'm going to give it to Arthur. Yeah. Just like, because the guy. story, I, I it's, it's also for me, I also take into account how human it is and how easily I can connect. Yeah. While I wasn't in the Wild West, there's still always that very human factor of that game. Yeah. Like, so I connect more with Arthur than I would Cassandra. Okay, okay. The next one is, um, now, before I name the nominees, I will do a little of explaining. It's best audio design. So that's more than just the actual in-game music. Yeah, that's okay. like... It's literally the sound overall, so like... Yeah, the sound quality. Yeah, the actual quality sound quality, quality, quality like footsteps walking on the ground, mm -hmm. knocking on doors, reloading guns, guns shooting, swords clashing, all of the sound effects, like overall, right? And the nominees are Call of Duty Black Ops 4, Forza Horizon 4, no. God of War, 
Maybe. Marvel Spider Man and Red Dead Redemption Two. Red Dead. I t- give it to Red Dead hands Red down. Red Dead um, for sure. They, Forza, they, Red Dead for sure. I don't know. It's cars. Car. No, cars can sound great, but Forza is not one of them. Yeah. Forza <laughs> uses that. It uses the same for every car in the game. It really yeah. does. Or if it's a truck, it makes it slightly deeper. Wow. But it uses the same yeah, fucking sound. Red for Dead every because car. the amount of detail they had to put into making yeah, it feel like, like a western. It really it, sounds like like literally if he's reloading the revolver, you can hear every bullet like the little Yeah. <laughs> like <laughs> every <laughs> bullet when he's putting like when he's searching cabinets, like all like, of it. So Red Dead. Even down to like he'll lean over and like search a body and he'll open their jacket to like search the body, you hear the sound of like cloth moving. Like like you know what oh, I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like he I can't like, hear that shit Yeah, like that's it's funny, yeah. like Red Dead through and through. That shit's oh, yeah. ridiculous. That's, like, that's an easy sound sound design. That's an easy Yeah, that's an easy. Best sound design ever though? Not ever. Just for its category. For, like, for, I'm, for, I'm for this saying, year? Like, oh. For the, this year? Yeah. Red hey, Dead. If Siege came out, that shit would be winning. Siege? Yeah, because you have... Siege, if you don't play with a headset, I'm sorry. Because yeah, everything, Siege, everything bro. is an audio cue. Everything. everything like, shit, a bird, audio cue. It's ridiculous. Like, a toe tap, audio cue. A door creak, audio and cue. And not only that, the sound travels in that game. And so like it it's like 360. Yeah, like, it's wow, it insane. Like, like if you played it with heads, you, like you need it because really you hear time into that shit. I was okay, like, okay, I can't but, fuck with nobody that don't play that shit with a headset on. But of so, this year, Red Dead. Okay, so the next one is best score. So this is this specifically is the, the in-game music. It's uh, the nominees are Celeste, God of War, Marvel Spider-Man, Nino Kuni Two. Octopath Traveler and Red Dead Redemption 2. I don't give this to Red Dead uh, no. because it. Oh, you bang, bang, bang. Yeah, it was. Other than a few specific moments <laughs> no, where they picked a few <laughs> specific songs, oh, the game God. overall, it really was what he said. Yeah, bang, 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 don't get me wrong that feels great and epic but it was like you only know how to feel great and epic you don't know how to feel anything else so god of war i'm sorry spider-man i'll say low-key spider-man's because like well, because it had more of a range. Yeah, and, like, there are moments where you're web-slinging through the city, and it's, like, silently playing the theme song in the background, like, on cue to, like, every web-swing. Also, That like, shit was beautiful. This is gonna sound like... It sounds weird to me saying it, but Spider-Man almost has a theatrical score. Yeah. Like, yeah, exactly. A full theatrical score. Like, when it's down-tempo, it t- still doesn't sound down-tempo, but epic. Like, God of War, it could be, like, a sad thing, but it'd be, like, an epic-ass sad thing. Yeah! <laughs> the other shit, with Spider-Man, it's just a little, little sprinkle, Yeah, you know, here or there. I don't know about the other games. i give it to Spider-Man, though. For that, yeah, I would give it to Spider-Man. All right, then we have Best Art Direction. Ooh. Uh, Assassin's Creed Odyssey, Ooh. God of War, Octopath Traveler, Red Dead Redemption 2, and Return of Obra Dim. Then I gotta figure out these other games. I low key give that to Assassin's Creed, but that's just because I love fucking Greek mythology, and I do think that their world, their art, its design overall is oh, wow. just painfully beautiful. I would. Uh, the Return to Obra Dim has, has a very huh. What game? Return to oh, Obra uh, Den. Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Oh, okay. uh, Return to Obra Den. While it's not, it's not really the it's, most aesthetically beautiful. There's but it something has about that, like, yeah, that, that black that's and white. Like, yeah, it has that like ooh, I don't 80s know black and white sci-fi. I don't know. I really line. like that. And it really was nice. Don't get me wrong. Red Dead. Uh, uh, it just I has mean, it has like the Clint Eastwood vibe. You know what yeah, I mean? Like, Which that's what it was, but. What is it yeah. called? Celeste? 
Yeah, so no, no, no. That the 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 next one is Octopath Traveler. Oh, right, right, yeah. That one that's has a 2D like shit. yeah, that's like a two D like um, like artsy anime esque kind of style. And then you have God of War. And eh, then nah, I wouldn't say this just because I mean it looks good. Don't get me wrong, but this reminds me of like PlayStation One. Yeah, exactly. Like, exactly. Nah. Okay. <laughs> so next one is best narrative. So essentially, best story. Uh, Detroit like, Become Human. Uh, God of War. Uh, Life is Strange Two Episode One. Uh, Marvel Spider Man. Uh, and Red Dead Redemption Two. Why is it just the first episode of? of oh, because uh, Red uh, Life is Strange is very specific. Like there's Life is Strange One. Episodes, I think, one through five. And then no, like no, it's Strange episodic. But yeah, and then... Wh- why is it not the whole game that's nominated? It's just that one. Because each episode is a self-contained story. They're and connected. The second one? Yeah, oh, all of them. Each episode? Like, they're all connected, like... but they're all self-contained stories. Oh. Yeah. That don't make no sense. <laughs> he said, oh, like, he got it. Game and then blocking. he was like, no. Nah. <laughs> yeah, basically, it's not like playing um, Telltale Games of Walking Dead. It's not like that, where each episode is directly connected to each other. In Life is Strange, each episode is actually, like, it's connected, but if you ended the story right here on this episode, it was a full-fledged story. Yeah, it was With the beginning, thing. middle, and end. You kind of get what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Honestly, it's kind of hard to say. Uh, Detroit Becoming Human is unfair because it's like four different stories compiled into one. Yeah. But it was done very well. Um, God of War was really good, but it was also very very predictable. But it was still done very, very well. I haven't played Life is Strange 2 yet, so I don't know. Marvel Spider-Man was also very predictable because it is a comic book story directly based on a comic book world. But it did that world so fucking well that it, it hurt, like, it... I mean, I literally said, to me, this is the best version of Spider-Man I've oh, ever yeah. seen outside of the comics. I was This is better than any other game, any other movie. This is the best version of, like, a Spider-Man we've ever seen. I don't know, man. I think I'm gonna give that shit to... And then Red Dead was just... I'm, like I said, that shit almost made me cry. I'm gonna give it to... I wanna give it to Detroit. Yeah, because Detroit was really good. Because it's like the human condition. Yeah, and it really like was. What makes something human? What gives you a soul? Like, it's deep. Yeah. Like, the other ones are deep, but this is like metaphysical and shit. Like, this is the <laughs> shit you hit a blunt and it's too much. You're just like. You know what I mean? You start. Yeah, no, you're, you're right. You yes. don't know if you like, your, yeah. <laughs> That game had moments where you just put the game on pause, you walk away, you have to go walk down the block real quick. Yeah. Place, look at the sun <laughs> through the you're trees. Like, like, did Jesus exist? Yeah, like, like that moment, that game really had moments where you're just like, uh, I, I need to think about my life. Yeah, like, what, what am I like, doing? What am like, I when doing, he had probably? Connor draw that picture yeah. of, like, what, what was it? He told him to draw something. Yeah, he was like, uh, he was like, Connor, you can draw, right? No, no, not Connor. He had um, yeah, the black it? one. He had the black one. Oh yeah, picture. yeah. I forgot his name. But he was like, yeah, he was like draw a picture. And then it came out as like agony or anguish or some shit. Well, you get to pick. You yeah. decide. Yeah, but, I like, was like, it. He draws the picture and it's like an exact copy of whatever you look at. Yeah. Right. And then he was like, he was like, well, anybody can do an exact copy. I want you to draw it with feeling. I yeah. want you to be expressionist, like express yourself. And he, you're like, he's and a robot. He, he can't do that shit. Yeah, and then he does it, and it was just like this super metaphysical painting that was just like holy, like it was shit. crazy. That made me want to sit down and draw. Or like even like, the <laughs> moment where he, uh, where he had the fucking Jesus moment. Oh yeah. Where he was walking down the street, pointing the robots and just liberating. And they were all getting feelings. And yeah, shit. they all got so souls. Like, <laughs> yeah, it was great. It's a point. I'm like, you do. You really. Do. I'm giving it right. to Detroit. I'm Detroit. giving it to okay. Detroit. Detroit. And then uh, now we have best game direction. Okay. Um, basically, this c- category overall is like the company that had an art direction or a cinematic direction and you feel that they've accomplished that the best. Uh So the nominees are A Way Out, Detroit Become Human, God of War, 
Marvel Spider Man and Red Dead Redemption 2. I'm, I'm giving that to Spider Man. Nice. I'm giving that to Spider Man. I told you, Red Dead and Spider Man are in almost every kind of I'm giving it to Spider Man just because, like, they had a mountain. They did. With that. They, they had, did. They, like, Red Dead was kind of like a fresh IP. You're like, the same people that make Grand Theft Auto. How bad could it be? Well, you honestly, know, like, I really, realistically, I expected the exact same chunk yeah. that I got in Red Dead 1. And yeah. they did that. They did that they very did well. That. They did they exactly did that. that. Whereas Spider Man somehow gave me the usual Spider Man story, but still somehow identified themselves as their own individual. Spider-Man. Yeah, like they had a direction and they nailed it. Yeah. Where God of War, it's like it's Kratos. Like <laughs> yeah, God of War was like, well, it's Kratos. At some point, he gonna get mad and kill shit, and then at some point, he gonna redeem himself for killing. Now shit. the shit that was fucking me up was when Kratos was getting tired. <laughs> You're just like, wait, this nigga gets tired? <laughs> like, <laughs> right! <laughs> and in Detroit Become Human, honestly, like, it has multiple endings, so I don't know. Uh, that makes it I agree. To... Spider-Man. I, I say Spider-Man, just because they had so much to live up to, and yet they did it in their own way. Okay. Awesome. So the next one is Best Ongoing Game. So basically, like, a franchise that's continuing. Oh, okay. Um, so we have Destiny 2, Fortnite, No Man's Sky... Overwatch and Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Siege. Real talk, I give it to No Man's Sky because they literally resurrected themselves. They literally brought themselves back from the dead. They had literally the worst launch in video game history (laughs) and then somehow brought their game back. You sure it wasn't (laughs) E.T.? Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm just saying. Okay, no game will ever be so bad that they have to get all the remaining copies and burn them in the desert. Like they buried no them game will ever be life. that bad, other than ET. But, but No Man's Sky. No Man's Sky. It literally resurrected. Like, how do you lie to me? How do you lie to my face? Pretty much call me a stupid son of a bitch. We say fuck you. We leave you alone. Come back and you still sucker me again. Because yeah. that's pretty much what happened. But when you came back, though, you got to admit, it was a great game. It was. It was a great it game was good. when you came back. But I was still mad at you for swallowing me, you asshole. Yeah, like, so honestly, yeah, I say No Man's Sky. Like, Siege? I'm surprised Warframe ain't in there. Yeah, right? Warframe, Warframe should be in there. It needs to be in there. I would have given it to Warframe. And yeah, if Warframe was a nominee, I would totally give it to Warframe. But because it's not... It and I don't even like that shit. <laughs> but I've just seen motherfuckers... Why don't you like it? Lose. All right. I tried to play that shit a while back. I was All right. like, it's, it's not for me. He's this garbage. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the big one. It was a game of the year. One. Game of the year. Oh, shit. Here's the big one. Fortnite. <laughs> Oh, fuck it's that. fucking Fortnite. Fuck no. And here are the nominees. Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Word. Celeste. God of War. Marvel Spider-Man. Monster Hunter World. Ooh, wow. Red Dead Redemption I 2. I didn't expect Monster Hunter World to be in there for Game of the Year. Yeah, it's in there. Jesus. Wow. Those are the nominees. I want to give it to the underdog because I didn't expect. Well, technically, the underdog is Celeste. Celeste. Fuck Celeste. This. Y'all need some years. Honestly, <laughs> low key, you know that's just in there because they were like, we gotta have one indie game. Yeah, it's true. One indie game. It was so good, nominee. but uh, give them freedom. Look, let them have some. You don't get no fucking variety in this shit. You don't, but <laughs> I told you guys, God of War. Red Dead, Spider-Man, and Assassin's Creed are basically every category right. that they can be in. All right, I'm going to give my, my honest... <sighs> All right, let's take a little bit of time on this one. Okay. okay? Elaborate. I'm, I want to give it to God of War. Okay. Wow. Because what? how long ago did it come out? Uh, I think it came out in April, actually. April, right? I think it was April. So People are still on that game. Like, it's still relevant. It's a still very relevant game. People are still playing it. People are still talking about it. With the others, they just came out. Like, yeah, most it'd, of be, them. it'd be kind of unfair. Other than um, Monster Hunter World. Yeah, other than Monster Hunter which is why I give Monster Hunter World, like, a second. Like, just because it's been around for so long and people are still playing it. Like, they took the whole year, as opposed to these that came out, like, later in the year. Like, these came out later. We really had a little bit of time to figure out the kinks. We really had a little bit of time to, like, understand these games. We've had enough time to get bored of it and say, fuck it, and we're not bored. I mean, I'll say, honestly, first of all, no matter which one of these nominees win, they're all going to be happy. Not what about like Celeste? last year, I was, I was upset. That, Even if Celeste yeah. wins, because of the indie titles, 
that was one of the best. Yeah. So, like, no matter which one of these games wins, I honestly will be like, I'm happy. Um, but it's it's almost impossible for me to pick just one. Like, I don't know who I want to win. I'm only And I'm only going off of one aspect, too. Like, I didn't throw, like, the score in there yeah, or like, any of that shit. All it, of these games were just so, like, just so good. Like I, I will say I was most invested in... It was between God of War and Red Dead. Yeah. Spider-Man, I wasn't as invested in. One, Spider-Man's, like, my, one of my favorite Marvel heroes, so, like, it's kind of unfair. It's, like, biased right off the bat. I'm like, I'm into it without, without really having to be into it. But, like, Red Dead, like, whenever something would happen, I would comment or feel something like I was there. God of War, definitely, when shit happened, I was like, I'm there. Like, when Kratos freaked out and carried his son's dangling body i was like no, don't let that little boy die please and that was the first time you saw kratos you've seen him like worried or scared but this was like a but, new like, level he always covered it up with like anguish and anger yeah but this wasn't and this one this was like did have a wider range of emotions yeah like my son is dying yeah. because i'm fucking up and you're just like damn you have a heart like i mean you had a heart but you have a hard heart like yeah. my god like so, I don't, I don't know. Like when he would get, when Kratos would get mad, and then try to calm himself down, it was him trying to be human. Yeah. Like, yeah, you get that dry. It's Kratos, but he was trying so hard to be a better person that I was just invested. And then Arthur, he was redeeming himself. He literally had the human he went, condition. He went through snow. He went through. He's been betrayed, backstabbed. He's we like, talk about Arthur. I, but I love Arthur. No. I love him. Like, we can't talk about him. Why? It's still fresh. <laughs> it's still fresh. <laughs> like, Ar- like, you look at Arthur, you're like, man, that was a man. Stop saying the like, name. Call him something else. What am I supposed to call him? <laughs> the Red no, Dead no. protagonist. John Marston's father? No. Basically? He no. took no. care of that little boy. Too obvious. <sighs> Too obvious. Tuberculosis? <laughs> Tuberculosis? t Burke? This game, that's worse. What about t Burke? No. t Burke? <laughs> But, like, like, honestly, he had the human condition down, like... He did, like... like it's between those two for me. Like, I, like again, I love it's Spider-Man. So hard to... But, like, Spider-Man, for me, I'm not doing it because I'm already, I already like the character. It's not... I didn't come in fresh with that. <laughs> like... Yeah, exactly. You just was like, make it good and I already say you win. Yeah. And they made it good. So yeah, like, like yep. God of War, in all honesty, I was ready for a new direction. I kind of got sick. After three, I'm like, how... Mo- are you going to be angry forever? <laughs> like, because he's more... Like, if it was, like... Okay, comparing Kratos to, like, Asher from Asher's Wrath, right? Even Asher in the first game calmed down. Yeah. He was like, oh, that's my daughter. I was only mad because they you made They just kept provoking him. That's it. Don't pro- Don't. <sighs> Look, I had to digress for a second. <laughs> this man punched the finger of a dude bigger than the planet Earth, his finger, and the dude disintegrated. <laughs> yep. Yep. He also killed the god of creation. Just don't make the man mad. Yep, don't make him mad. Don't make him Just mad. Just don't make him mad. But, like, at the end of the game, he calmed down. He was yeah. like, you made my daughter cry, so I had to kill the earth. Basically. Basically. But with Kratos, it was, like, five, six games. He's like, I'm just angry. Like, and you just, like, you, you killed your father, Zeus. All right, that, that should be enough. It's not. It's not enough. I'm like, still mad. Yeah. He just killed Dude, everything. He killed all he killed, the fucking gods. He killed, he killed all, all the gods. And fucking, was still mad. Just a couple of them niggas. The only thing that calmed him down was some giant pussy. That's basically <laughs> it. Like. But I like, love that shit. It's like, this nigga rips niggas apart and he fucks some bitches. It's always some random bitches. Like, Do you like it because he, he a thug, basically? Pretty much. I mean, <laughs> like, <laughs> the, the dopest shit you can do. It's fuck niggas up and then go fuck some hoes. Like, <laughs> well, and this nigga does that in every fucking game. Did he? He didn't have in sex in, in, in the new one. He didn't have sex. Yeah, in the, in the new one. one he doesn't. Cause his wife is dead. Yeah, that's his wife is dead. That's his fuck. second wife. Yeah, yeah that's his. That's second his wife. second wife. That's his second wife. That's his that, second. Okay, but that's time. what I like about the old Kratos. Yeah, he was Kratos. They reimagined him and all that shit. You know what I'm saying? Old Kratos was like, I'm fucking niggas up. I'm fucking bitches. I'm killing gods. <laughs> That's about it. That's about it. <laughs> That's about it. <laughs> I'm fucking niggas like I'm fucking bitches. That's about <laughs> it. Oh my god. That's about it. Like, I honestly though, like, I really can't decide who I want to win. Uh, I can't. 
They're all good. If they're they, all if good. any of them, it's like if Fortnite was in there, I feel like I feel like I would need to start a, an actual boycott. At least it they probably, got they got some respect for game of the year. Yeah, like, they do. There's no Call yeah. of Duty in there. Yeah, there's no Fortnite. Not like fucking weak no ass fucking... last year. Three Nintendo games in PUBG. <laughs> look, you can't <laughs> like what? Look, you can't <laughs> under, you can't what? underestimate Nintendo. We what? went over this. That shit pissed me yeah, the dog, fuck off come last on, year, bro. Like three Nintendo games in PUBG. <laughs> yeah. Come on, like that that May? oh oh. oh and Persona. Alright, let's not talk about that. That that was last year's that's nominees. Like, that's all that came out last year? Like, <laughs> yeah, right! I was like, really? That's all that's I had it? to pick from. That's it? Doing that's shit to grab. Bro. Like, yeah. but this year, they honestly had some heavy hitters. They had some good shit. And the nominees, I'm proud of all of them. Like, and, like, I don't care which one wins. If any of these win, I would be happy. Yeah. At least I think. You'll never know. Uh, they might fucking make Odyssey win and I'll be pissed off Spider-Man didn't win. You never know. But... Mm-hmm. Honestly, looking at it now, like all of these, all of these guys are deserving of the nominee. Yeah, just they I favor deserve, more. Like, like I favor God of War more than the others, like, just because I do. I want to say I honestly I favor Assassin's Creed Odyssey more, just because the only difference between these games is Assassin's Creed, Assassin's Creed Odyssey, uh, <laughs> Assassin's Creed Odyssey. The gameplay truly reeled me in. I truly enjoyed pressing buttons. Whereas the other ones, it was primarily what happens next that yeah. reeled me in. Yeah. Primarily. Like, even God of War got to a point where hack and slashing got kind of boring and I just repetitive. Started, well, you also had to start just throwing your axe. Exactly, but yes. then you really just was like, I want to know where this story's going to go, so you keep playing. Until you got the Blades of Chaos back. Yeah, and then you get Spoiler those. Over. But then even, like, a little bit after that... You get back to like, okay, let me just press this combo and win so I can see what the next cutscene is. That's you know true. what I mean? Yeah. So like, don't get me wrong, still no, great, but true. like the gameplay itself was not enough. Because Odyssey had solid... Yeah, but Odyssey's gameplay. gameplay was fucking outstanding. But Spider-Man, they finally nailed the web swing. They did. They did. But, I mean, that did one... They know? Oh, okay. You okay. You, you, you <laughs> have no opinion in that. You don't want looking for you look for glitches, Bruh, right? It's not a glitch, like it's it, look, basically no. <laughs> basically well, no. So he basically, said, he wants a Spider-Man that web swings by real world physics, where that's basically impossible. <laughs> that's what he wants. Okay. He audience. said, you see how he skips on the ground? Like oh, oh, he wants man, basically he was, he was flying and gliding and shit like. I was like, because that's yeah, how Spider Man web swings. Like, he don't fly. <laughs> like, <laughs> he, he floats through the air between swings. Yeah, but he don't it's fly. Called, <laughs> like, it's called fictional forward momentum. Oh. <laughs> Well, at least you that's, got that's pretty much what it was. Yeah, because there is a like, such thing as forward momentum. If you propel yourself enough, you will float through the air for a few moments. To the degree he does it, that shit ain't real. <laughs> well, but also, it still works on the same principles. Well, because he's a superhuman and not real, it, it makes sense. Exactly. Because I'm like Superman, I can just go in the air. All right, let's not talk about that shit. <laughs> if there's no explanation for how I fly, I could just do it. Well, I can fly. Uh, also, the sun is my power. But even if you block the sun, I'm still strong because I can suck. I can suck the sunlight out of flowers who transferred it already. Yep. I can steal the metabolized solar energy out of flowers. It's already. It's already. <laughs> and then on top of that, by touching one flower, by touching one flower, he sucked the whole field. So basically, he reverse engineers photosynthesis. Yeah. <laughs> Reverse synthesizes the already synthesized energy. <laughs> oh, what fucking principle? Like, what? Oh man, that oh, shit made me like. I went from zero to a when thousand. When I saw that shit, like, like oh. I would have been happier if the nuke exploded and it just didn't hurt. That would have made me happier. He takes the nuke into the upper atmosphere, it explodes, oh, and then he just flies away like Yo, God. I'm Superman. That would have made me happier. But this nigga got blown up by a nuke and then fell into a field of sunflowers. <laughs> That's what made it worse. Fucking sunflowers. And then grabs one of them and, and just sucks out all the fucking energy. 
energy oh, yeah, yeah. out of the whole field. I'm back to full strength. And then comes back to full uh, health. I was like, what kind of dumb <laughs> like, shit is this? Oh, I went God. from zero to a thousand. I just could not pro- <laughs> like <laughs> only one word came out. That doesn't make any fucking <laughs> sense. Like, like this nigga, one more time. <laughs> Reverse synthesized. Already synthesized solar ah. energy from a field of sunflowers. Why sunflowers? I would have taken petunias oh or some shit. My oh my god. Too much that shit. And then, mind you, mind you, this was New 52 Superman who said to be the weakest. weakest. Oh yeah. And he, so, so what can fucking the regular Superman do? Fucking like, he could take solar energy just from lights. <laughs> That shit made me so mad. That oh shit, like, <laughs> that shit made me so mad. Like when, you, when that shit, when my brain actually figured out what, he, like when my brain figured out what he was actually doing, I was like, no, no. You know when you go insane because you can't believe something? That's kind of what happened. I lost it. I was like, no, no. It's not real. Look, see, I'll take, I'll take Spider Man doing that shit over any of that. Like, no. Oh. Oh my god, oh. like, I still can't process oh that sentence. Oh my goodness, man. <laughs> reverse engineer is photosynthesis. Like, it's already, talking. it's already been sucked up. That's it's like, already been metabolized into food. <laughs> it's <laughs> That's like me touching you and pulling a hot dog that you've already digested out of your body as, as a, a hot dog. dog. <laughs> take the pizza out of Latin's stomach. Yeah. Because he's uh, next to you. Actually, this whole complex. Oh, yeah, this oh. whole complex. Oh. All right, well, this is over. Like, we hope one of these like, Game of the Year's get the Game of the Year, bro.